how often do you guys do this, meaning appear together Never. on a fr- Never. Never. This is the first appearance we've had together on anything. Okay, so those are the overlapping voices of our friends Katie Nolan and her betrothed, television's own Dan Soder, who you might recall from his various comedy specials or his role on Billions, or from one very specific semi-viral video, which we will get to in a second here. I always loved working with Katie at ESPN, and so I guilted both of them into coming over to the Metal Ark Studios in New York. So, in terms of where you are right now, thank you for <laughs> Me being specifically? here. Yeah, <laughs> both of you specifically yeah. and jointly yeah. um, for doing this. Yeah, thanks for having us, Pablo. It's an honor and it's, a privilege. It, 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 it's for me, um, a favor I don't think I can repay because me and my wife are never going to appear on a podcast together Ever? in any context. That's what they never. say. Till we launch our podcast. Yeah. What's the? Oh, I can't. No, we're, not. no we're just joking. <laughs> we're joking. But I would have you two as our first guest, and you uh, would have to because we did this. Yeah. Well, we met you guys at Dan Levitard's wedding. Oh yeah. In Miami. <laughs> it's like our third date. That really was. <laughs> our first three dates were. Pretty fucking cool. Your HBO special. Well, the was first our one date. was just regular date uh-huh. with dinner, and then you and then we hung out. No, then we went to the, the cellar, cell. and, and I was late. it was regular to <sighs> you, and I was just standing there, surrounded by famous people, comedians that I loved. We came around the corner, and David Tell was standing there, and I was like, "What's up, Dave?" He goes, and "Katie, then- meet Dave." And I turned around on the stairs, and I was like, "Oh, Dave." Oh, David Tell, hi. <laughs> and then I like elbowed you and I was like, don't ever do that. So was this a, was this a power move though by by your fiance, your future fiance at that was point it? to be like, hey, come see me in my element as I hobnob with first names that you know the last names. No, it was the only date that she and I were both available to go get dinner and I had a spot at He's the cellar that I obsessed. couldn't cancel. But you'd like to think, right? That it was a flex. It's a good move. Oh, yeah. like, I just now, went the second to work date, with him. The second date was absolutely a come to my HBO special taping. Yeah. I knew what that was. <laughs> that was definitely like, come and see the finished act. And thank God it was good. Because I sat there like, what if I'm, yeah, what if never, I hate it? She had never seen, she'd only seen me do limited stand up. So I was nervous as hell. Yeah, but it was great. And everybody should go watch it. Son of a Gary, streaming on what used oh, to be excellent. HBO. God knows where it, it is. Max, now. it's on Max now. I'm yeah. a Maxinista. But then we met you at um, Dan Levitard's <laughs> wedding, which for me was like her moment at the cellar times 20. While I'm waiting for a ginger ale <laughs> standing next to Pat Riley. Please explain for people who, who are not like all of us at Dan Levitard's wedding what it was like to walk in as as a, as a relative outsider, Dan. A, a big outsider. Also on, like, uh, new relationship behavior. This oh, is yeah. like— When yeah. you walked in, by the way, because I'd seen you on Billions. I yeah. knew that—I obviously knew you were a comic, all that stuff. Um I was like, wow, this is, I, I didn't, I, I of course Did you put it together know? that Katie brought you. Yeah. yeah. But it sort of made sense that you'd be a face just like wandering around next to Andre Dawson. <laughs> I mean, that was wild. <laughs> there were a couple of head turners for me. They, like seeing Pat Riley, there was a rumor that Charles Barkley was going to be there. I think that's how I sold him on going. And I was like, was like very be- hyped to meet Chuck. I was bummed he wasn't there. Yeah, me too. I, I was like, man, if this happens, this is going to be the coolest wedding ever. But- it was what still a, a cool wedding. Was, Thanks for inviting us. It was unbelievable. <laughs> it was. It, it was unbelievable because also I was so new to, you know, we were we were brand new dating. And we actually, it was a couple months at that point. But it was weird to be in a room with people that I've yelled at the TV in a disagreement with. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, you had a bad take about the Niners last year. I didn't like your take on the Nuggets. <laughs> it was like weird. But then it was so cool to see Dan and meet you and meet people that I genuinely have just had on my TV. Likewise. That was that was unbelievable for me. Yeah. And then the funniest part was Dan and his wife were very adamant, like no cell phones. Do not take any cell phone pictures. Do not do anything. They they said it a couple times. Oh, yeah. It was like Dave Chappelle show pouch right. style. Yeah. Right. So we knew we were safe because we hadn't told anybody we, we were dating. Anybody. We weren't ready for like right. a soft launch. We right. were just like, you know. We were, we'd been friends since 2014. Right. So and the internet like, has thought we've been dating the but, whole time. But we were like friends and then it crossed that boundary. And so we were still new to being like, how do we tell people? Do, right. How do we do this? But the this? no cell phones thing, we're like, good. So no, there's not going to be any pictures. Safe so space. we won't even have to worry about it. So. Enter. Uh, dude, what's crazy is where you think of how <laughs> everything has landed now. Because we're at the after the recept we're at the reception and we're eating and Marty Smith comes in hot <laughs> off Tua being injured at Alabama. It's okay to wonder should Tua have been in the game. 
Oh, yeah. Mm. Tua that's br- why he was late, right? Yeah, because he was like, you can't believe this. Tua can't, got oh, injured. That, that's not what Marty Smith sounds like. Oh, he's like, oh, yeah, my, he's like man, Tua's injured. It's bad. It's, <laughs> I don't know if that guy's ever going to play in the NFL. He is, and he's going to win a Super Bowl this year, if the 49ers know. If, uh, we'll get to that. But – it was funny because he didn't get briefed on the cell phone thing. Mm-hmm. So, oh, my God. No, I now, I now remember exactly what happened. He and <laughs> and the, the, the whole wedding party's entering, and Marty's filming it, and he's like, man, you know, obviously, uh, the pureness and goodness of his own heart. He's oh, like, yeah. He's like, man, with, what with, a beautiful ceremony. Pans what be- the whole With, with the enthusiasm of a man who had just sky dove yeah. into the stadium. Yeah. Yes. Like, yeah! Yeah, dude, yeah. he came in and he was like, what a wedding! And he films, we didn't think much of it. And then we fly back to New York the next day. And Katie looks at Twitter and she's like, oh no. <laughs> and I go, what? And she goes, Marty Smith posted a video of the wedding and it's me and you standing next to you. People People figured us out. And we were, we were like, sitting, it was like we had our backs turned so we were looking at the ceremony, like what was happening. But yeah. like I turned at one point and like grabbed my drink and turned back and you see there's just the two of us and I think I like put my hand Yeah, we were doing like little canoodling. Oh, you you, oh, know, you Kino escalated. Yeah. And so then as soon as we saw that it was on Twitter, then my phone rings and it's Marty Smith. So and I was like, <laughs> what? We were and in I a answered, garage at LaGuardia. <laughs> <laughs> waiting for like a car or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, he, and I answered, he's like, Katie, I'm so sorry. I think I did something I wasn't supposed to do. We were like, well, Marty, you got the scoop. He's like, I have to to apologize to you. It was so funny. He's like, like, I have taken the video down, but people have it But it has been monetized already. The damage has been done. It was out. And we were like, all right, what a cool way to get your relationship broken (laughs) up with by Marty Smith. So um, I want to explain a little bit of what the format of this ostensibly is. Yeah. What's um, the show called? Pablo Torre finds out. PTFO. I PTFO. Get it now. What's I with like the legs? It. Um, those are a. Uh, it's a montage of 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 calf muscles culminating in the most Filipino calf, which oh. is the most muscular, of course. Nice. Damn. I have, that is. That's such, what your calf. I'm all like the way saying? to the left. Yeah, no, we're gonna, you're not. You're the, you're the <laughs> first green one. You're the third the one. The left is the skinniest. It's, it's the most vertical. Yeah. yeah. You're so sweet, but I don't. Uh, you've got calves. No, I have healed in a tent legs. <laughs> <laughs> I have the power of God. Is healed I you've been me. using those hyper ice <laughs> and I just in the sauna and hot, your calves. Uh, yeah. You spoke tongues when the doctor yeah. laid yeah. hands on I you. I got up and I was healed. And then now I'm slowly walking <laughs> with my stick legs. <laughs> do you have all the way to the right, Pablo? I do. I mean, That's wild. I do. You Those do? Are fat calves, what? dude. Have I never seen your calves? I have to like just, yeah, let's pull them I mean, off, he's dude. Got the pants rolled Bust up. them out. Oh Damn. my god! Damn, you got those ones that look like there's something oh in there. Oh my god, you got a cow heart, dude. dude. What like the that. f? You that have, looks like an implant. Those are calf heart calves, dude. Do you remember that? Um, look at that. That's pure hey. meat. That is pure meat. Do you remember that True Life? True Life. I have no calves. I have calf implants. Yeah, that's uh, what it was. True Life. If you I didn't think that all of my friends in high school were like, "Hey, Soder, really? they're doing surgery I didn't know for you." No, this was like a point of dude. When I played football, sensitivity for you, and I was not good. When I played football, I was big up top, and then everyone was like, "Look at his stick legs." Oh. It was just like two sticks. Just like oh. <laughs> I did oh. stick legs. Yeah, let's let's show them. Oh, uh, mine aren't shaved. Otherwise, I'd also participate. Yeah, that's they're only shaved up to like here. I don't think they're that bad. They're also not in the camera, but I don't think they're that bad. Yeah, you got to go up, 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 up with it. Yep. Hey, I'm, I'm 40. It <laughs> <laughs> is, folks. You got it. <laughs> Dude, my hip flexor is going to be raging all week. <laughs> Mid purse told me I have nice calves, and so we'll just take it at that. Yeah. And you don't have to see them. Yeah. Show well. your feet. There's all these guys at home going. <laughs> That's right. Wiki wiki calves. <laughs> nice oh, profile. We can make that a thing, Pablo. <laughs> All these dudes want. heard that and they're like, you better stop them at work right now. <laughs> Showing your little toesies. <laughs> All right, you were saying, ostensibly, the format of your show, you wanted to explain it, and uh, we're ready. Oh, oh, right, right, right. So right. this is a show, what I, it's a show that I call Share and Tell. It's like mm-hmm. a show and tell thing. Um, mm. Typically, we do it with Dan Levitard, but Dan Levitard, uh, founder of the company, Man Whose Wedding, we just uh, violated mm-hmm. the privacy of again. Right. Yes, again, yeah. over and over. Uh, yeah, he, he was the guest on our first episode, so we're going to do something different with, I guess there's always a Dan. Mm-hmm. So thank you for being oh, the, that's the Dan. Yeah. I'll be the Dan representative. Yep, yeah. yep. And uh, Katie— I'll be the Mina. <laughs> 
So what we do, we're like, we're like stunt Dan and yeah, stunt we're like Nina. stand-ins that are like, like okay, the they're here. Through, you guys can get up. We jump jump through the glass and then yeah. they show up and they go like, okay, thanks guys. Can you hold us? <laughs> <laughs> union jobs though, yeah. yeah, great union jobs. benefits solid. Mm-hmm. Stand with the union. Mm-hmm. That said, um, what I need you guys to do is uh, tell me about the things that you've brought me today. Yeah, and I want to start. Um, because we bring in the things that we're obsessed with in a given week. Mm-hmm. And I want to start with Dan. Yeah. Mm. Um, the cabs would have sufficed. I would have talked about Mike Allstott's cabs for 40 minutes. Man. If, we would have <laughs> if his time. cabs are anything like his neck. Oh my God. That man was the coolest. Growing up watching Mike Allstott as a white guy, you were like, that would be the <laughs> that, that's football player I'd want to be. He's got a neck roll, huge calves. Guy didn't get taken down when they tried to tackle him. Man, Mike Allstott, you rule. Does this happen? Now? Does this happen with just time. like just reminiscences? Yeah. yeah. Upon yes. like. Well, that's what that's what I brought you, because um, I, I feel I was telling Katie this. I feel like I, um, whenever I talk about sports, I, I bring up my childhood friend Mike McDaniel, the head coach of the Miami Dolphins, which I you know I, I bring up anytime bring someone brings up sports. About, uh, so. Me, so would I. Yeah, yeah. that's what I say. I'm I always like, you're not talking a, about it too much. It's no, the amount not that enough. I would talk about it as well. I, I feel like I, I talk well, about it. Well, it was too cool much. because before he became the head coach, obviously he was the uh, coordinator. Run game coordinator. Run game and coordinator, then, offensive. then offensive coordinator of Dan's team. And Dan grew up in Colorado, so that's where they know each other from. So the yeah. fact that he ended up on the 49ers coaching staff was wild. And then to see him get the head coaching job in my so, division. So two stories from that that are my favorite McDaniel stories was. Mike's mom, Donna, was great to me. Shout out uh, Donna. Shout out Donna. And shout out Gary McCune, his, his ex-stepdad, because they would let me stay there. I didn't like my mom's boyfriend. I didn't like going home. So every weekend in seventh and eighth grade, I spent the night at McDaniel's house. I bring a bag with me, put it in my locker. Oh, wow. Slept there Friday night, slept there Saturday night. After all the football games on Sunday, my mom would pick me up and take me home. Donna, uh, Gary McCune, Mike's ex-stepdad, worked for the Denver Broncos. So that's how Mike was able to be a ball boy in 97 and 98. And Gary was like the first dude I met, like that was a dad that was cool. That you were like, I'm going to go in the garage and hang out with Gary. Like Gary rules. And big Broncos house. Mike was a huge Broncos fan. And that's why week three, Broncos at Miami, we're going down there Oh, this season. I'm not missing that. I'm not watching Mike coach his ex, like his favorite team growing up. Right. It's going to be awesome. So I'll, I would always wear 49ers stuff because I was my, my family's from the Bay. I lived in Denver, but I was a huge Niners fan. I would always go into Mike's house, and Donna would always say the same thing. She'd always go, you're wearing the wrong colors. Like, just as like a little ball busty. But she'd always say that. She'd be like, you're wearing the wrong colors. And I was like, oh, Joe Montana's better than John Elway. That's always what I came back with. <laughs> um, so Mike, uh, you know, coaches in the NFL, starts in 05 in Denver, goes to Houston, uh, goes— Coach Dennis Green in an upstart league, then comes back to the league for Washington, Cleveland, Atlanta, gets hired by the 49ers. When Your Kyle, team. Yeah, when Kyle takes over the head coaching job. First game I go to is uh, Seahawks at Niners after Thanksgiving of that first season. And Mike's wife is like, hey, I'm going to leave you passes. Come say hi to him on the sideline. Great. I drive down from my grandmother's house. I go to the Levi's. I go to the sidelines. I get on the sideline, and there's Donna, Mike's mom, standing there. And the first thing she says to me is when she sees me, she goes, I'm finally wearing the right colors. (laughs) And I was like, best callback I've heard. Because I I haven't heard that since probably eighth grade. And I was like, that's amazing. You know, I hugged her. I was like, this is amazing. Uh So to watch him go to the Super Bowl in 2019 and all that. So then 49ers lose to the Rams, NFC Championship game, uh, 2022 season, or 2021 season. I'm like, I think McDaniel's going to leave. I think it's about time. He's like, probably going to. And Katie, I swear to God, I remember where she was standing. Katie's in the kitchen (laughs) of our old place in Jersey. And she's just in the kitchen doing something. And she goes, yeah, that's cool. Just nothing in the AFC East. And I go, right? (laughs) And then two weeks later, I'm like, he's the Dolphins head coach. I was like, he took the Dolphins job. And she has been great about it. She softened up because at first the rule was no Dolphins. No Dolphins merch was the first rule. And then I bought a Finkel vs. Einhorn. He's got about seven Dolphins merch Yeah, now, and I just started getting... It's whatever. Yeah. It is what it is. But I don't wear it too in your face. No, sure. But fins up. Fins up. <laughs> so McDaniel uh, being an NFL head coach is crazy. But the thing I brought you today on the yes, podcast yes, is... Yes. Something I don't get to talk about ever, which is the guy you used to play Madden with 
is now in Madden. Yeah. <laughs> and they made him... <laughs> The first season was last year, his first season with the Dolphins, obviously. And they made him look, they made him stonery. Oh, wow. Gave him a hat. Didn't really oh, look wow. like McDaniel, honestly. It oh, looked like not at all. It, what it did is it looked like his end of his uh, at the end of his time in San Francisco. He has like eyes a, that are wrong. There's like an eye shadow. Yeah, aspect it looks like here. he's in an emo band. Yeah. They didn't do him justice right. last season. And he's a guy that like he's fashionable. I, I feel like I can say this, he's he looks good. Yes. all the time. All of his clothes are like perfectly tailored. Even when he's got sweatpants on, you're like, Tim, you look well, really nice. The watches. Everyone's like, ah, oh, yeah. this nerd, and I'm like that. Is a very well yeah. and expensively dressed yes. NFL head coach, yeah. especially compared to his peers. Yes. Yes. He's, yes. He has always been very fashionable. Yeah. He's always been like, um, he knew what to wear, how to wear Wait, it. But give us, give us the, so before we get into the, uh, <laughs> the before and after of Madden. Yeah. When you guys are growing up. Yeah. Give me the visuals on what you and Mike McDaniel best friends Seventh and eighth grade are looking like. If we encountered you in like the oh, hallway, we had um, we both had the long hair. Oh my god! Down to here, down so to like your cheekbones. Cheek yeah, <laughs> down right above, right below, <laughs> right below. Parted down the middle. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> Hot down the middle. <laughs> Comb down. Um, was we, it greasy? Like you put stuff in it, or it uh, was just? I didn't. My, my hair. Uh, fell perfectly like Jonathan Taylor Thomas Ugh. for like two years Damn. and then everything got messed up. Oh. But Madden... Yes, yeah, so we everyone have... Kept, so we have the... This year... This is this year's the second image that I have. Is, it, they, yeah. they made him look like McDaniel. It's McDaniel's. better. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, better. Yeah. The, the, with the short sleeve, you're kind of like, I don't really know if you do that. He's too fashionable. But then I <laughs> sent one with him in a long sleeve... Uh, the other picture I sent in that email. And that, oh, okay. that looks like him. Well, this would fit better. The bottom of this would fit better if it were McDaniel. Like, it's yeah. a little bit loose. Oh, are you saying his tan his pants would be tailored? No, his the bottom of his shirt. Oh, yeah. The way mm. it's kind of a little... The way your shirts are. Do, wow. Yeah, do from, little, like, tugging them too much. Yeah, I do. That's, <laughs> that's the one fashion note I always get from Katie. I'm like, stop pulling on your shirt, And I try dude. to tell her I'm hiding my weed gut. <laughs> <laughs> so please let me. Um, this photo uh, feels, I imagine, lucid dreamy to you. The most lucid dream feeling I had was we went to, Katie and I and my friend Zach went to the Dolphins at Jets at MetLife. And there was a moment that I told Katie where I was like, this feels like a nap dream. Where I was like, if you told me, that, if I woke up and I was like, yeah, Zach and me and my future wife were there like watching McDaniel coach the Dolphins <laughs> against the Jets? Because it wouldn't make any sense. Because if you would have gone back then and be like, he's going to coach the Dolphins, you're like, why? Why that team? How that team? But that's how life right, works. Right, the Mad Lib aspect of a yes, nap. Yes, that's exactly it. That's exactly it where you wake up, you're like, yeah, McDaniel's coaching the Dolphins? So it felt, that was the that was the one time in my, where it really was like, and when we were at the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. With the Niners. Because mm. that felt like. And then we went to that sad party after they lost. Because, you know, they and, rent out the. Right. The no, they're prepared and they have in, to do in any it eventuality. Yeah. Well, they so, have, yeah, they, they so both. So you go and you eat the shrimp tower. Oh, and God. The, we were just sitting right. there eating tacos. <laughs> just Hillary with, Clinton 2016 exactly. vibes. Yes. 100%. 100%. And we're sitting there eating tacos with a very bummed out Robert, Robert Sala, Sala <laughs> and Mike McDaniel. <laughs> That's who we were eating with. And they were like. And the DJ, remember the DJ? And he's like, come on, man. Y'all had a great season. You're going to get him next year. And everyone's like, Ugh. dude, the funniest part was watching. Because it, it, it was the same with every little micro group was the same as the whole, made up the whole party where every family member was seeing their, like seeing the player for the first time. So these little pockets of condolences going on where everyone's going like, hey, y'all y'all did real great this season. And then just in the background, it's the Jabberwockies <laughs> just like dancing, just dancing. And they're like, hey, man, I know this was your career goal, but. Um, and then was it Lil Wayne who was like two hours late? It was, he was three hours late. We were already gone. We were like, we're going to go. We're not there waiting. Is, it was such this. a bummer. Was, I don't think real there's sad. a sadder mental image than a sad Jabberwockies. It's, oh. uh, it's so, un I'm like, I can't, I actually gained a lot of respect for him that day. Did they still like, dance? To dance at a funeral like that? It's wild. It was wild. But, um. But, but McDaniel in Madden. Yeah. When you played him in football video games. It was impossible to Both beat. of you guys love video games. Mm. You were playing Mike McDaniel in, in what, and how was that? We, we played Madden, but the game we really played a lot um, was 
Mike's stepdad hooked up a projector in their unfinished basement, and so we would play Tecmo Super Bowl on SNES, on Super Nintendo. And uh, we would do, we would do, um, 49, I would always be the 49ers, and he would be the Falcons. And he would, this is such a memory for me, because I got so angry. He would always switch to Deion Sanders and drop Deion all the way back. So no matter what play I picked, when I threw it, he would break on it with Dion. He would pick it almost every time. And as he was running it back, he would look at me and go, prime time. <laughs> prime time. And at, like, after the first two, you're like, okay. You know, like that kid frustration where you're like, you got to stop. You're cheating. Okay, that's Why don't you try to not be Dion? And he's like, why would I be anything but Dion? And then he'd drop back and then pick it again and go, Pride. I oh. used to get so oh. mad at him in that basement. Because I'm like, you're just cheating. And he's like, I'm not cheating. They, he's available on the game. I'm picking him. So the idea that you had a sense that this guy was actually a football genius. He just was so obsessed with it. I don't, I, I never thought he was a genius. I was just like, oh man, he loves football the way that I loved comedy. Where it was, and it was like a thing where we both would talk about it because he wanted to play. At the time, he wanted to play in the NFL. He wanted to be a part of the NFL. And I was like, I just wanted to be funny and not get in trouble at school for being funny. And it was crazy because he would read every media guide. He knew everybody. He had a little magnet thing on his wall with the standings because this is before smartphones or whatever. So he would update the... He would, like, I remember when the Texans became... He explained to me how the league was going to shift and I was like, dude, you know so much about the NFL. Breaking down the expansion draft. Yeah, he was just like, <laughs> he was just so into it that he, it was like, oh, man. When he started coaching, it it was like, oh, this is perfect. Like, when we were 22, my friend Chad and I, who that's my buddy Chad Harder, we always go to the games, you know, with, uh, with Katie and uh, Chad's wife. We went to the Dolphins game last year. We're going to go this year. But he started coaching for the, when he got hired by the Texans, Chad and I were living together. And we were like, it was the year of the Reggie Bush, Matt Leiner, um, Vince Young draft. Yeah. And that Houston had the number one pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were like, who are you going to take? Reggie Bush or Vince Young? And he called us. And I remember we were living in Tucson in Chad's truck. And it was a flip phone. And he you like. You were living in Chad's truck? We were living in Tucson. And you were in Chad's truck. Thank okay, you. I just wanted to make sure. No, it's, <laughs> it's like, this I, is don't, why I, I don't remember this <laughs> chapter of your life. But I remember being like, um, who are you guys going to take? And he's like, a defensive end. <laughs> from South Carolina. I think it was South Carolina. NC State. NC State. And we were like, what? And he was like, Kubiak thinks it's the best when you're going against Manning twice a year to draft a guy that's going to... I can't, well, who was it? I forget. Mario Williams. Mario Williams. And not, and Chad and I had never heard of him. And we were like, Mario Williams? What? And Mike's like, I don't know. He's like, I get to coach Ron Dane now. And we were like, <laughs> that's awesome. He was like telling us who he was hanging out with. But it, you just saw like... um you know, it's like anything. When you see a friend find their thing, mm. you're like, oh, this makes all the sense in the world. This is what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. And it's just been cool to see him have success. And like, I think really it's cool that you said that you he was like with football the way you were with comedy. And now look at both of you. Yeah, we always talk doing about your that. Thing. My favorite moment of this was Mike's first season. They were living in San Jose in an apartment. And after the game, we went and got pizza. And we were sitting around a table eating pizza with like me, him, his, his wife, and his in-laws. And Mike's like mid-bite of pizza. And he goes, do you remember when you and me got bullied in middle school? And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mike takes a bite. He's like, look at us now. And you're like, yeah, right. it rules. What was being bullied in middle school like for you two specifically? We, oh. were the two, we were the two kids that didn't want to do the bad stuff with the bad kids. And we hung out with the bad kids. So you can imagine the names we got called. You were like bullied by your own friends. That's what it was. Yeah. And then uh, one time I got into a fight with one of them. It was one of my only fights I've ever gotten into. And I was on top of the kid. And another one of our friends came and punched me in the side of the head. And McDaniel was there. And then everything, the cops showed up. So we, everything got broken up. And I was like mad at Mike. And I was like, dude, why didn't you jump in? I got punched in the head. He goes, because it's me and you versus all of them. He's like, I jump in and they would have just jumped us. And I was like, damn, you're smart. <laughs> I, just remember right when he said that. I, was, I remember exactly where we were. I was like, ah, that's a real good point. You should probably. And then he we went to Yale and you're like, that makes sense. It's that Yale brain. That makes sense. But the, that, the idea that you two would talk about this all the time, you sort of snuck that in. 
You would be a comedian. He would be a football coach. Yeah, we and just kind of would like. It. We just kind of like long plan it. We just kind of like how explicitly. Not like. Not anything to one day in the 2020s, yeah, you'll be a head yeah. coach. I'll it be just, a stand up coach. It was just like, oh man, if we could both do any sort of like job in those worlds, we would both be like super pumped. That's exactly what it was like. It was like, oh man, can you imagine if you were like working in the NFL doing something and I was like working in comedy doing something? And you'd be like, oh, that'd be so cool. Cause you're also like going from middle school to high school. So it's terrifying and. Man, and I was so bad at football, and he was good at football, but he was undersized. Right. And so there was this kind of this feeling of, like, we weren't cool, and we were friends, and high school was terrifying. So it was uh, it was very interesting to be, you know, to see where we both landed now. Well, the question I have, the last question I have about this Madden photo is that the thing that is most conspicuously absent is, is anything vape? resembling a vape cartridge. Yeah, yeah, vape. Oh, well, first off. That one game. He had one game. Forever. And he was we'll stressed out. It was. A th- I loved it because I was like relatable. You are coaching this game that like there's a lot riding <laughs> yeah. on this. It's stressful. Who's st- among I'm, like, us? Like just let so, him hit the vape. When it happened, I was at the game. Me and Chad and I and uh, Katie, Mike's wife, were all sitting together, and the tweet goes out with him hitting the vape, and I just with my phone, I just show it to Katie, his wife, and she goes. Okay. <laughs> she just like, there wasn't even like no he didn't she just goes god damn it right. she's like it's fine it's fine and then he's like I don't know I didn't do anything and then afterwards I didn't see him because I had to I had to leave before I could see him but I was like dude the vape thing he's like I don't know what you're talking about yeah. I was like dude I'm not gonna tell him <laughs> so funny and I just love now that Dan Katie you're marrying like Mike McDaniel's cable news surrogate now yeah. oh yeah the spokesman which I don't think I should be. <laughs> I think you do a good Disagree. job. Disagree. Yeah, absolutely. I think you absolutely. do a good job of it's like you're being honest and you're not, you know, you're. I think you do a good job. You're a good yeah. representative. It's just like if you have an important position in sports, you don't <laughs> want the person that's representing you to be a clown. Yeah. You don't well, want you don't want the guy with like the best Randy Savage impression. Undisputed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna cut. Yeah, I'll have. I'm gonna come in and talk to the Dolphins as Macho Man. What would that sound like? Be like, yeah, the AFC East return the glory. Yeah, I ain't talking about the Buffalo Bills. Ain't talking about the New England Patriots. I love you very much, <laughs> Miss Elizabeth. <laughs> My Miss Elizabeth loves the New England Patriots. Yeah, they've been a dynasty. Time for someone else. That's what I keep saying to Katie. I go. You guys had 20 you years. You guys had your chance. You guys had 20 years. <laughs> you guys had your chance. So I want to pivot to my topic. Oh, yeah. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. I, the format. I, yeah. I could honestly just shed the format entirely. But I did some journalism for you guys. Okay. Let's hear it. I investigated a tennis story. Um, not about like Novak Djokovic or Carlos Alcaraz or any of these players. Um, I investigated a specific court at the U.S. Open, mm. and I brought you a little field piece. Okay, I'm, I like I'm it. trying, let's go. guys. I'm really trying. Wait, like a video? Like a can vi- we can we play the oh, video? Oh, let's go. Roll go the, to the tape. Video. Let's Roll check the, the tape. Let's check the tape. <laughs> Bit of a stinky situation at the U.S. Open. It is not because of the action on the courts, though. Some of the top tennis players in the world are complaining about the smell of cannabis. Yeah, Court 17 definitely smelled like Snoop Dogg's living room. <laughs> I smelled it, actually, today also. <laughs> yeah, when we... 17, yeah, when we warmed up, I, I smelled it also. Court 17 is a modern court built in, I believe, 2011. That's right there. Right there. It's everywhere. Literally everywhere. <laughs> the whole court smells like weed. Was there a smell out there that was bothering yes, weed. <laughs> That's court 17. Is that the first time you ever noticed that smell before? Nick Kyrgios complained last year about how much it was bothering him, the weed. It was marijuana. And so I did what any self-respecting New Yorker who also hosts a show called Pablo Torre Finds Out uh, would do. I went to go smell court 17 for myself. Working today? Nah, well, technically, <laughs> this is work. Yeah, true. <laughs> I don't know that man. Have you guys been smelling it? Yeah. 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 But what became clear is that nobody was actually smoking anything inside Court 17, which brought me back to exactly where I started. Yeah. This is the park. <laughs> 
<laughs> at score 17. That's so funny. Did you funny. find the guy responsible? I did. <laughs> and he was looking back at me in the mirror. <laughs> yeah. They, is it just people out in the park just yeah, smoking weed? Yes. So nobody, they reviewed, I spoke to the man in charge of Court 17 mm -hmm. who refuses to give his name. Wow. Um, for a long time. And he was like, we checked security footage. We have people posted up. It's not allowed in this court. Huh. But that park is just full of people smoking weed. And it's like a beautiful, you know, summer evening. The wind blows it in. And he's like, what do you want me to do? Yeah, who cares? Tennis players are so particular about everything. Like, even from the way, you know, they watch them like bounce the balls or the way they hold stuff. And they're like, it's funny that th they seem like dorks being like, guys, stop smoking weed. It's like you're outside in New York City, dude. I've seen a lot of people since it became legal, like on the New York City subreddit, will be like, okay, I get that it's legal now, but do I have to smell it everywhere I go? And I'm like, it's just a smell. No offense. We should I, be I, I, sensitive yeah. because We Dan, should also come, We should, let me come out and say, okay. I can't smell. Oh my God, that's Speak right. your truth. I can't smell. I, I don't have a sense this. of smell. It smells nothing. <laughs> it's okay. What is this? Thank you for being I'm so strong I'm right now. I started smoking cigarettes when I was young and I exclusively exhaled through my nose and it, it ruined my sense of smell. <laughs> no sense of smell. So no. any milk in our apartment, he's like, I, you've got to smell this. Is this good? Every time. So Katie needs to protect you. Yeah, yeah I can die. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. When but I smoking weed, I also smoke a lot of weed and I've never known when I've smelled like weed. Right. That's so what's crazy. It's like he'll be on the road, and I'll if there's like been a time I feel like I came to your hotel yeah. after you were already there, and I Portland. walked in, and I'm like, dude, this it smells like <laughs> like weed in here. I was like, really I smoked in the shower. Bad. It's fine. <laughs> like, no, no, it's not. So then I got you that spray that. Yeah, the osium. What's yeah. the wait? Where there's a spray? Osium. O yeah, osium. Spray that like will. I was like, just spray this, and then it. W you don't have to worry. It'll definitely take care of the weed smell, even if it doesn't smell. Just spray just it because you don't this. know. Osium's great, dude. Yeah. Osium. A lot we of potheads know. There's also osium. for. Um, I I was going with like a uh, paper towel roll full of. Uh, oh, bounty sheets. Yeah, fabric oh, bounty, yeah. I knew about okay. bounty sheets when I was 15. When I'd get high in high school and come back to school and just. Just wipe a bounty sheet on you. You yeah. smelled like laundry, but my eyes, I was like, <laughs> allergies and fresh laundry, man. It just makes me think of when I used to smoke cigarettes and then I would think I didn't smell like them anymore. And then once you quit and you're like, you smelled like them all the time. Yeah. God, that yeah. was my main thought as I was talking to the guy in charge of Court 17. Yeah. Was just like, oh, he knows what's happening. He knows happening it's here. me. <laughs> this guy is way too into this topic. Yeah. Well, because it's probably that thing where like when you work someplace, it's always brought up. And you're like, I know. So he was, so it, it was hilarious because he was in charge of Court 17. And like his account was the one everyone was talking about. Mm. And he was like, come on. Like, I now know. now yeah. the boss yeah. is going to come yeah. by. Because they're like, yeah, you're yeah. letting people smoke weed. If you are listening to this and you run a marijuana company and you don't come up with a strain called Court, Court 17, 17. Oh my yeah. God. You're an asshole. You're leaving money on the table. 100%. Yeah. Call it the US Open. Yeah. <laughs> Call it the Djokovic. You got all these different strains. And then Court 17 Perfect. as just a loud pack, dude. The loudest. <laughs> the loudest pack better be Court 17. When you smoke that, you're like, I can I have a little bit of that. I want <laughs> I want highly paid European tourists to complain about this. Yeah, what they're like, what is this? What is this smell? And you're like, that's at court 17. Ooh. I want to know how do all these tennis players know what weed smells like? Mm -hmm. mm. Can they not smoke weed? I don't so, think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. But it also to your point, it felt so tennis is so OCD. Yeah. yeah. And in general, like the tennis Grand Slam events are like Wimbledon. Yeah. The French Open, mm -hmm. they have like kings and queens. <laughs> yeah. They have like manicured yeah. grass that's yeah. been watered for thousands of years. <laughs> yeah. And then they show up in Queens. Yeah. And right next door is a park full of people from Queens that's where it's right. like blowing clouds. Right. Oh, yes. F you too. <laughs> it really is coming to yes. America. <laughs> We're like, dude, I, I love it. I, I absolutely love the thought of some dude in Tim's and like, really baggy pants being like, nah, son, <laughs> just blowing <laughs> weed smoke at the tennis thing. And then some guy from Australia is like, I couldn't even warm up because of the weed smoke was so bad. And it's like, nah, dude, welcome to Queens. And my favorite part of the story is that like, in the end, the U.S. Open officials did not send the cops out to like okay. stop these people. Yeah. Good. Because I was, I was worried. I was worried on behalf of them, on behalf of myself. Like yeah. it's technically not allowed uh, weed in a park. Oh but yeah, that's like smoking. Because it, the rule in New York, I don't know if anybody abides by this, but it's like wherever you can smoke a cigarette, you can smoke weed now. Right. Yeah. 
And so technically not allowed, but also the guy was like, it's in New York. Mm. Like there's food, there are people getting off of work, like tournament workers are on break. also a lot yeah. of other smells that can hit you. Yeah, you, I'd sure rather it be weed than-, than garb- Wet garbage. Yeah. I also like the idea that for some athletes, like weed is actually a PED. Like everyone yeah. in this video is complaining about how it disrupts them. Mm. I'm sure there are some people out there whose performance actually benefits. I bet in the NBA, now that it is legal, next season, you will see, and I'm making this prediction right here on the show, you will see multiple players' points per game go up, <laughs> and you're not going to know why. <laughs> and people are going to be like, this guy was only averaging 12 points per game. Now it's at 26, and you're like, because he now he's smoking weed, he's in his zone. His flow state. Do you think there's a possibility, <clears throat> though, that you also see guys get really scared? Oh, God, I would love to <laughs> see guys a guy who, like, up. try to get high <laughs> just to get in the zone, but then you hit it wrong, and you're like, oh, no, hey, oh, and we're, no. We're looking at Draymond Green not coming off the bench. He says he feels like his feet are made of water. <laughs> and Kerr's like, you got to hit him. He's like, I can't. That would be hilarious. Watching a freak out, watching the first weed freak out timeout. It's like, like pretty funny. Like, why is Clay Thompson just furiously typing into his notes app right now? <laughs> like, oh. oh, God, if that's not me. Oh, that's me every time. Why so is Splash Brothers? Why does it have to be Splash Brothers? We're not even brothers. Is gratitude really the greatest gift? <laughs> yeah. My knee aches. Why does my knee ache out of nowhere? He starts freaking out like having a panic attack. Did I hurt my knee again? Oh. All right, Katie. What have you brought us? I didn't really bring anything. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Mm. Uh, you were like, I'd like you to bring one that's like non-sports to balance it out. Because we've done a lot good. of sports. It's been really sporty. Today. Um, and so I, uh, which is good because at, at first my sports story was going to be that the head of a, a soccer federation uh, made out with a woman in front of everybody after she won the World Cup. Crazy. And then somehow tried to say, like doubled down on it and was like, I didn't do anything wrong. Crazy and that, was, that has been an insane story and his to mom, watch unfold. His mom went into a hunger strike. In a church. In a Crazy. church in Spain. For the, her creepy son, the, who was creepy, and we all watched him be creepy. He gave her a kiss in like grab the sides of her head, like in a no dr- way out. Like you know when someone's drunk at a wedding and they're like, yes. "Let me kiss you." I'm gonna Can kiss, I kiss you? you. I'm gonna kiss. And he did it on the stage, Crazy. on TV, and then was like, "What?" She Lock, liked it. She locked liked into, it. Locked in. Just insane. Like, hey, great job. Come here. But since we're not doing a sports story, he Joe Namath her. Oh yeah. Oh god. Yeah yeah oh, god. yeah. Can I kiss you? I just Susie. <laughs> <laughs> you just won the World Cup. Can I kiss you? It would have been better if he asked. I don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't right. get the you're impression right. that he really asked that. He gave, a, he gave a mafia dawn. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to kill you. He's you're like, mwah. 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 And then that's implied that's, that's how we are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's how we kiss Which our is now making, it's now making me reconsider if she's like. Maybe you need to step down. I should ask her. Her mom's locked in a yeah. church. My mom's not eating because <laughs> I kiss my dog and I think it's okay. Um. But since we weren't doing a sports story, you were like, let us look at your algorithm. Oh, yeah. This is my go-to now, is I just want people to show me their for you algorithm it, Mine's page. finely tuned on my TikTok. The problem is my Twitter. Twitter, once it got turned into X. X going to give it to you. Um, and it keeps giving me uh, ads for Cheech and Chong's gummies. Oh, my I gosh. Can't. This could be you right now. That's Stop what it always it. says. This could be you right now. I'm like, Stop what it. do you mean? It is me right now. Don't I'm high me, on this app. I don't need. Don't make me block both of you. It's wild. <laughs> Cheech and Chong. I didn't want to do that. But you have Growing to. up, if you were like, you're going to block Cheech and Chong, you're like, for no, what? No, they and couldn't they go, do anything. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> they couldn't make me upset. Uncle Cheech, Uncle Chong. No way. And it is just every constant. Every one scroll. There's every Chong. single. It better be working. It better. I was like, I hope. I can't wait to see the documentary where they're like, they really capitalized on it, this new. It better work. Yeah. Cheech and Chong are on the cover of Forbes. Yeah. I I love that for them, honestly. Um, but on Twitter, my my the problem with the new Twitter algorithm is if you click on something once, and I'm a curious cat, so I click on everything that comes across my feed. If you click on something once, you just are served that every time you open the app, like every update to that story. And the other problem with that is with all these people trying to get monetization on X, they all just 
keep talking about stories that like should have died two days ago. Sure. So every day there's a new update or angle on something that you're like, we really didn't have to get this deep. You're just the lady at the bottom of the bridge watching Spider-Man fight <laughs> yeah. Hobgoblin. Exactly. We are like, oh, I was just going home. Oh, wow. Uh, that guy threw a pumpkin. Oh, wow. Is that a bomb or a pumpkin? <laughs> How'd that guy fly? Hey, you got a little, uh, what do you got, a little hoverboard? Yeah, yeah, just an glider. observer. You really are. You're just one of those, that you are, you're an observer. That's how I feel, too. But my TikTok algorithm. Yeah, what's that? Let me that? ask what's you this. Yeah. Do you know, do you know Pinky Doll? I do, I do now. Okay. I didn't know if she, this is the other thing about the way these all work Ice now. Ice cream's so good. Ice cream's so good. Ice cream's so good. Balloon. Balloon. If, uh, gang gang, <laughs> gang gang, you don't know if, like, your thing that you're seeing all the time is, like, popular with everybody or if it's just hitting you. Yeah. So you're like, Pinky Doll is a celebrity in my life. I just don't know if it also translates, but it's good to know that it does. It's weird to see these internet celebrities and like who's over where, like who's popular with what, because a guy that, that's very popular just came into my feed was the nerdy kid who's like, look at the drip. Oh. Ooh, ooh. I'm going to take your girl. Ooh. Do you and know like, this kid? This, this kid rules. He rules. Oh, what up, guys? Look at the drip today. The drip nuts. Gee whiz. Gee willikers, Batman. Is that that drip? Ooh. Ooh. This is what it looks like if I walk up on your girl right now. Yo. You trying to do something or what? <laughs> oh my goodness. Wait, visual, visually describe, Dan, what is what this child looks he like. He looks like the biggest nerd you've ever seen in your life. Giant glasses, uh, messed up hair. Kind of like a kid that you wouldn't give any thought to having this much swag. And he's got the most swag I've ever seen a kid have. Where he's like, check out the drip. It's crazy. I Watch $15. He like goes off. He's got so much confidence in mm. someone that immediately you would see and be like, I bet you don't have a lot of confidence. So it is that. It is the bear riding a bike theory. Oh my God, I've never seen this before. <laughs> I've never seen a nerd with this much confidence and swag, be like, oh, the drip is ridiculous. And you're like, I'm going to steal your girl. And you're like, oh, sure, buddy. And this is <laughs> fun because you're like, bears can't ride bikes. When you said bear riding a bike theory, I thought that that meant that off screen was an adult cattle Probably. prodding him into performing mm -hmm. in front of a camera. Mm -hmm. But Pablo, if I've learned anything from 30 for 30s, Probably. if I've learned anything from documentaries after they're made, maybe. There's maybe a guy <laughs> going like, Hey, we gotta do the drip thing. He's like, I just want to play my xylophone, and they're like, No. And he's like, What do you want me to call it? And they go, Say it's saucy. <laughs> goes, Ooh, the shoes are so saucy. Oh my goodness, the drip today is absolutely immaculate. I cannot even, I cannot even contain my swag this morning. Hold on, let me hit my jig real quick. Ooh, that too fire. What y'all know about it though? You ain't know nothing. <laughs> she finds me. The best one. The weirdest. <laughs> That's a lady on TikTok too. That lady who does pre's. The lady who's like, "Here's what we're drinking tonight." Dude, I've I haven't drank in ten years, and Katie found this British woman or Irish. She's she. I think she's British, and she makes these drinks. That's like alcohol on alcohol with more alcohol like on it. Like three vodkas with like a little splash or something. And then she got a metal straw, and she'd be like, "Let's try it out," and she throws it in and. Downs she drinks it. it in like two sips and then she does this thing where she swirls the cup with the ice and the straw oh, so yeah. she gets all of the alcohol in it. She's like, that's delicious. Oh, this smells amazing. Let's try it. That is gorgeous. And you're like, I don't want to see this. Here's what we're drinking tonight. She's great. Uh, yeah, she is great. But she it's really it. bad. But and I she want, should... she needs to do a, a hangover. Yeah. One, a hangover. Where the account. next day she's like, hey guys. Well, me head is split. Um, bad idea. Didn't eat my empty stomach. I've been dry heaving. <laughs> I've been making this noise a lot. <laughs> <laughs> if you ask me about my drinking career, I would say I made that noise more than anything. <clears throat> when you got nothing. Oh. The worst. Wait, wait, 10 years though. Yeah. Is a, I mean, is there a milestone that you celebrate? 
How does this work? Oh, with a drink? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Um, no. When it, we get to 70, we're smoking again. Yeah. 70, we've agreed when I turn 70, Katie and I are drinking and smoking again. Um, but that's it. Everything else is like... Cool, I did it. Yeah, I don't know. Just quitting alcohol seemed... Uh, it was I, it was necessary, and then when I did it, now I don't really like... I don't know, I don't like to rub it in people's faces, but I definitely think my life is a thousand times better because I don't do it. But I watch that, and I'm like, that, that would be fun to hang That'd out be with fun. for one night. <laughs> She'd be a good party. But then the next day, that's why you need to do the TikTok of the hangovers to show everybody where it goes. All right, so we've reached the end of the show. We have? Well, we got to say what we found out today. The show is Pablo Torre Finds Out. That's right. Um, and so what are you taking away from all of the things we've discussed here? I, I know personally, I immediately want to go out to Forest Hills and smoke weed by Court 17. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. want to blow a arm size pre-roll <laughs> right at that court. Specifically with some of the tournament workers who like I know need this on yes. their break to yeah. cater to everybody from yes. Connecticut. You are dealing with the worst of the whites. You are dealing with tennis whites. They're worse than NASCAR whites by a long shot. They're not as bad as golf whites. It's around the same. Croquet, polo whites, that's a different world. Tennis whites you need to for. Because tennis whites at the U.S. Open are also going to throw you some slang yeah. to prove that they're not the golf whites. Yes. And it's going to make you yes. need to get even yes. more stone yep. to deal yep. with yep. this. Yes, that makes sense. Or, or they're probably hitting the people that work at Forest Hills with a lot of, Katie and I love doing older mom and older dad subtle racism that we've seen. Hey, girlfriend. Our, when, when white women hang out with black women, they all, like my mom's age, who's like 70, if she gets around a black lady, she'll be like, oh, you know it, girlfriend. And you're like, no, <laughs> no, no, don't no, don't no, say no, that. no, 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 no. Please don't do that. No. Or dads go like. My brother. No, they go, my man. My man. And you go, he's not your man. Not your we man. were watching something the other day where he goes, and my main man over here. And I go, I guarantee you do not ever call a white guy <laughs> your, your main, main man. man. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and you know that those tennis whites, they get out there to Forest Hills and there's like a black guy working at Arthur Oh, Ashe, they're, they're getting they're like, so many- Excuse me, my man? <laughs> just so many fist pounds. Oh my God, he's like, am I right? Killer serve. Am I right, my main man? <laughs> like, Dude, f*** oh. you. F*** you so hard. Oh. I hate it. My man. man. Oh. Oh. Ah. Yeah. yeah, what did you learn, Katie? Oh, um, I learned- that I love you guys. Both so much. <laughs> that was mine. I learned that, that this was is uh, I learned that I miss talking into a microphone, uh, and I should start doing it again. Hell yeah, you point. should. Hell yeah. That's what I learned is that the, I could do this for like three more hours. Yeah. I have so many more. Th I'm gonna get home, go through the videos, and be like, I should have showed this to Pablo. Oh, we have so many videos. So many videos. So what I learned today is that you guys got to come back. Yeah, yeah, all right. Absolutely. I mean, I mean we live here now. Yeah. We're guys, city folk. You guys cohabitate in New York City. Yeah. You're yeah. welcome in this studio. We have a generous. It's a uh, nice place here, you guys. Yeah, the metal office. This is all just are you. Beautiful. This is just you. I'm kind of like uh, a boxcar child. So like, I have the I run of the that place. Book series. Oh yeah. I always reference that. No one ever gets. It. Oh, yeah. By the way, those kids had to have gone through horrific abuse. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Can we revisit the boxcar children I, you series? Know what, that's what I found out today. The boxcar children? Yeah, underwear. There is a behind the music on yeah. that that no <laughs> that one is, should want to see. Uh, we should break down that series, yeah. the three of us. We should have to read like four of those books because they, they made homelessness seem so cool. Yeah, they when did. they're like, we're just kids that live in boxcars. And you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Who's the what man happened? that comes around yeah. that hurts you? Yeah. What's what's inside the yeah. bindle? We're just some, <laughs> yeah. What's in your little bindle? And they go, he gives me opiates for when I feel hungry in my tummy tum. Yeah, dude. Let's revisit the boxcar children. Mm -hmm. um, thank you both. Thanks for having us, Yeah, thanks Pablo. so much. Thank you, guys. Um, thank you for making me feel better about my calves. Most of all. They're great. My God, Great dude. calves. Yeah. Fantastic The fact calves. that you put on pants ever. Well, they're rolled up a little. Just, it should be strictly shorts, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like outsiders, like, uh, you know, that movie where just like yeah. real rolled up sleeves but for my pants. Dude, yes. I just say Capris. shorts above the knees nonstop all year round. When you do wear shorts, they're above the knees, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Pablo in a below the knee shorts would be no. very funny. <laughs> Although the cargo pockets oh, are yeah. useful. I mean, I love them. Preaching to the choir. We yeah. both got cargos on right now. Pablo She's and I wore the same pants. She's a cargo girl in a cargo world. That's right. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> The 
This has been Pablo Torre Finds Out, a Metal Arc Media production. I'll talk to you next time.